let's get into the meat of it. Let's do a life hack, shall we? So what we have here, fingers crossed, we have a, a scenario. BT open zone. BT open zone is not the problem. It's just the internet carrier, OK? So I'm not saying BT open zone is in any way flawed. I'm not, this could be any internet, any public hotspot, anything at all. We have an individual, it's the hacker. In fact, it's me. I'm going to be the ethical hacker, so you're going to give me permission. And then we have iPhones. Did you know that when your iPhone sees BT Open Zone, it automatically connects to it without you knowing, unless you disable it? Yeah? It's in your back pocket. It will connect to it when it sees it, and it will transmit and receive your emails and also the internet's changing. We don't use the internet in the way we do. We barely use Google now. What we do, we install these little apps on our phone, and the apps connect to the internet. And they also connect to the internet. They have a username and password. And they do it behind the scenes without you knowing. As soon as they've seen the internet, they'll update the application. So the scenario we've got here, we have BT Open Zone in this room. And unfortunately, it's a rogue BT Open Zone, because it's my BT Open Zone. And I came up with this about two months ago. Phones connect to wireless hotspots automatically. What would happen if I went out to PC Mail and bought a little portable wireless router like this one and connected a G3 broadband mobile card into it? And then I called this BT Open Zone. What would happen? So guess what? It did that. And recently with CPP, we did a survey. 100% of people connected to it. So what I've done here, we've called it BT Open Zone. And just to show you, it's there, here. And I have this little tool running called Kane Enable. You download, download it freely from the internet. You can set it up. It takes two or three clicks. And these are phones that are, do, that are connected. And we'll just update this now. And it doesn't have to be an iPhone, it could be a Blackberry, or any mobile device you've got. So we've got a number of phones connected to BT Open Zone. You via, in most cases, your phone would have done it automatically. So what we're going to do, we're going to start the attack. All the computers connected to the device. And then we're going to, the, the attack has just been conducted. Now I'm going to do, I'll be the first. I'm going to do a send and receive on my email. I think so. Oh, what's that? Oh, Gary Marsden. Oh, Gary. OK, there's Gary's username and password. I'll just do mine. It was. You've got someone else, SNMP. Who's that over there? HCT. Someone's phone's connected to that. Someone else's username and password. Oh, there's mine. Jason, password security. So again, any website you're logging into from your iPhone or any phone, you can just capture it, instant. But you say, well, hold on, we use encryption, et cetera, et cetera. This particular tool has um, a cracker on it, and what it allows you to do is crack all the various different encryption standards. So if it is encrypted, you can decrypt it. So that's how easy it is, and you can see the problem within a public wireless, you know, public wireless networks in your business, people using, you know, internet cafes, etc. That's how easy it is. All right, instant. There's a solution, two-factor authentication. Crypto card are renowned in the world for two-factor authentication. It's nothing new. It's been around for a long, long time. The difference is we're trying to work with service providers around the world to make them responsible for implementing two-factor authentication, okay? Just like antivirus and content filtering, the internet service providers provide that service for you. There shouldn't be no reason why internet service providers around the world should be supplying all individuals with a form of two-factor authentication. Does everyone know what two-factor authentication is? So you know, so you have. So when you go to your ATM machine, your cash point machine, you have your cash point card and you have your PIN number. Without one or the other, you're not going to get any money out. And it's exactly the same with two-factor authentication. You have a device that generates a one-time password, and you have a unique pin for yourself. You put the two items together, 
If that's valid, that allows you in and becomes a valid username and password, and it's one time. It removes all the problems that we're seeing, and it totally removes and mitigates all the threats that are currently you're seeing in the press, etc.